So let's go. Right. Top five things to watch uh, next so week. Let's see exactly. what we got going. So number five, I wanted to talk about these rare earths. We, we haven't uh, talked rare earths, and it's actually not on anyone's radar. Have you heard anyone talk about rare earth at all? No, it's been a long time. It's been Although quiet. I do remember somebody telling me, saying the problem with rare earths is that they're not so rare. <laughs> <laughs> What's the symbol uh, for this ETF? What am I looking at? Here? Uh, this is REMX. And so this is the Rare Earth Metals ETF. Obviously, uh, it's been a, a really tough year, right? Like it's that the cheap stuff getting cheaper uh, and more expensive stuff getting more expensive, right? And um, this, this thing uh, at the start of the year, actually going back to last year in November, it was as high as $20. And it hit a low of about twelve bucks in August. Uh, so, Patrick, is this this is because of all the uh, this goes into like electric cars and stuff? Am I correct? Oh, I'm, I think this, this is. A, th I th I'm pretty sure this is a very broad rare earth ETF. So, like, I'm I'm sure some of the rare earths that are in this ETF are like the, of the stocks in there are making electric cars uh, components and other stuff but this this particular one i think is just an all-encompassing uh a basket of all the stocks that make or or produce sorry that mine rare earths but what's what then the point i want to talk about is we hit some sort of a low and at least we're getting some form of a bullish reaction uh, and that, I know I don't want to misconstrue that. It's I wouldn't call this a bull trend. It simply it was incredibly oversold, and it did a pretty good run of a couple bucks in a, in a, a week and a half. And what I wanted to just do is bring it to everyone's attention and say, is this as low as this thing is going to go? I mean, are, is this where we establish a bottoming formation? Will we find that, you know, th over the next three, four months, this uh, stabilizes and becomes a buying opportunity? Anyway, I wanted to talk about it. Yeah, I have no opinion. I Because um, <laughs> you haven't been it, watching it. I haven't been watching it. Nobody's I, I watching it. it. This, is, this is what I find fascinating about it. Well, there it, you go. Because it's right? been like, such a dog. And now the question is, the, Patrick, it's very unlike you to be picking like dogs like this that are down and out and finally getting a little bit of life to them. I haven't bought any yet. So, so, yeah. You're just watching it. Hey, listen, that's what this is for. Top five things to watch. You watch the rare earths, and then you watch it most likely sag into back into new lows. That's what I think. All right. Well, that's uh, good, good to know that that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, that, though, that, Kev. That, that, yeah. Oh, you I have a comment? Say, Pat, yeah. Well, I was going to say that my opinion in a subway token might get you home at night. Okay, number four, <laughs> the turn number in four. consumers. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about consumer staples as well. Uh, and what what's fascinating to me is is that some of these consumer staples start. Well, let's start with actually XLP, which is the uh, consumer staples ETF, right? And that has not really turned yet. Um, no. But it's been quite the run this year. I mean, these staple stocks are running like it's a bull market. And, and I guess uh, that is that whole theme that we have seen where there's huge money flow going into the low vol space. Right. Right. And there's a lot of these low vol ETFs that are uh, that where uh, the, the sentiment out there is, is that um, some recession is coming. So you don't want to go to cash. So what you do is you move, uh, go from high beta, low beta, right? You do a, right. a little bit of a rotation. And this has been a, a big uh, kind of uh, receiver of those funds. And so it's, it's exploded higher. Right. But what's interesting is, is that some of the names with uh, some of the high, uh, the biggest holdings within this space have uh, started to uh, see some turns. Right and now uh, we ha while we haven't seen a big turn in Procter and Gamble, which is the largest component within this, but like if you go to like uh, Coca Cola, uh, so, well, actually I wouldn't even call that it had a big reversal there, uh, but like one that caught my attention was Colgate right here, and you can see like Colgate's been struggling up along its highs for for pretty much almost uh, four months straight. And we saw a pretty hard reversal in Costco. Uh, and then you see the, those stocks, uh, those tobacco stocks like 
Philip Morris getting hammered because of the e-cigarette news. Um, oh, we're yeah. starting to uh, we're starting yeah. to see uh, a lot of these little components starting to drag, and uh, and then even then, even though I know McDonald's is not a big uh, uh, you know I would label as a big uh, staple i consider it a staple because it's it's just like uh, so many people actually uh, sp- uh you know, Patrick, we're not talking stuff. we're not talking about your diet here yeah we're not talking about my <laughs> diet but but like look at that break i mean listen uh, for any junior technician drawing this trend line and seeing that gap break through that trend line has got to be on everyone's radar right especially those junior ones I'm still laughing anyway. at my McDonald's joke, buddy. <laughs> okay, watch the consumer staples. Patrick's got a feeling, and he's no junior technician. He's a senior one. Okay, uh, number three, let's see what we got going here. Break Breakout in palladium and Yeah, that beans. was your idea. So beans were mine. Palladium was yours. Um, yeah, we no, basically... So- we really should have had six, but we just both wanted to talk about it. I'm kind of hesitant to talk about palladium because I'm worried the moment we talk about it, we're going to give it the kiss of death. Uh, um, which which is which is a true test of a trend, isn't it? Like if you think about it, if we can talk about it in the huddle and you didn't turn it, it's for real. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's a true test. If it's, we can talk about it and cause it to. But listen, is that not? I'm like I am a junior technician. I might not even. That's be, a break. Like, well, not only that, isn't that a cup and handle kind of jobby or yeah. whatever? Yeah, so uh, what I would call the pattern would be an ascending triangle, right? And so, yeah. so you have uh, this pattern of ascending triangle becomes the midpoint, and and you a uh, breakout's going to two thousand on the upside. But what's amazing about this is this was done in the midst of gold getting whacked for like fifty bucks, right? More yeah. than fifty bucks. What are we down in gold? Oh yeah, no, it's this 50 this bucks. this is not. Had a correlation to gold. Yeah, I know. For it's not years. It's you know what? It's not a precious metal anymore, and it's trading basically. I, I guess what's 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 amazing about it is it actually goes into uh, old school kind of gas cars, and yeah. uh, and and yet you would think with the the move to electric vehicles that, that we would see being less palladium, but meanwhile this thing just keeps rocketing higher. Yeah. It's uh, one of my kind of uh, sleeper commodities that you should be watching, and I and I continue to like it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, but so the other commodity that I wanted to touch on is soybean, and as a technician, I love it when something consolidates, doesn't make a lower low, and then gets a decisive breakout candle like this. Now I know you're gonna give me this ag thing of you don't you don't trade it in the middle of the harvest and all this. No, stuff. no, I'm not, but, I, I, I like I'm just saying that it's probably gonna get sleepy from here. I'm not sure we're gonna get a huge move now. The the true ag guys will tell or gals will tell me that, that maybe that's wrong. I just like to me it's kind of all the actions. Done, I, but we'll I'll, see. I I'll I'll make the call. I think we're gonna retest the high. I think that uh, at least the, the the high of 2019, which is yeah, around yeah, but that's not that really that much of a call. Like we're, no, 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 so no that's not a, that's yeah. not. But I like listen. If if you're looking for a call to 10 plus, then uh, I don't think so. But like uh, this 9:30, uh, I think that uh, that we could be there in, uh, in the next couple of weeks. It's it's a good breakout. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get Angie back, and Angie's one of our favorite ag follows, and she's going to the uh, goddess of grains, and she'll tell us uh, how we're wrong and how we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Number two, let's have a look here. What do you got? Uh, well, the euro, right? Like, oh, okay. uh, Here we go. So, Patrick, how bearish were you down there, buddy? I, I'm very bearish. I continue yeah. to be bearish. But you know what? So far, I've got a little egg on my face from you. Uh, well, to be fair, you know what, though? It really, like, let's face it. We could be back down to 109, like, next week. Right. Like, you know, but it's not that big a move. It's really, it's nothing. I'm not going to sit here and give you a hard time about it because the reality is that that's just noise. And I, you know. I, I, I don't not, think this is noise. I don't think do it's you? noise. Oh, my God. Hey, you know what? Uh, what I have, uh, well, you tell me whether you, you uh, have seen this as well. But I, what I've often seen is is that, and whenever you have a major meeting, whether it's a Fed or an ECB or some other thing, that the first hour it has some form of a, a, a trend reaction move, an impulse move, and then it reverses, and then a, a big trend happens for weeks, the exact opposite direction of the first hour. 
And yeah. we uh, always and, we always joke that they take it the wrong way first. Yeah. They and, always and, take it the wrong way. They always and, take it the wrong way. And so my my feeling here is is that that kind of little mini double bottom toward 109 uh, off of the ECB may have marked not an intermediate or long term bottom, but certainly it may have marked a short term bottom. And uh, and I it would not surprise me if we're at 112 or even 113 in the coming. Uh, in the coming week or two. Now, uh, that doesn't change my bigger view that I'm bullish the dollar, but certainly when I see that type of a reaction, uh, it means that maybe the move's not going to happen in this window of like the se month of September and that uh, well, that it's going to probably mean revert a little bit from he for here for the next couple of weeks. What's your take on that? You think agree or disagree? Well, I, 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 can, I, I can tell you that everyone should go out and short the euro because both you and I are bullish. Oh, and that's not going to work. That's so... Why do you gooch you know, my trade? Yeah, I, my, I've been bullish because uh, I'm bullish and wrong all the way down. So <laughs> I, I continue to think that it's just a self-imposed problem from the from the Europeans and they could fix it relatively quickly. Yeah. And hopefully that this sign that uh, Draghi is not going to continue to try to do more monetary and it actually does fiscal. I contend that if there was a change in attitude in Germany, the euro would see 120 before you could blink. And I know right. that sounds crazy, but um, and and all, imagine they went and did what Trump did. Imagine they went and said, "We're going to cut taxes." Like we're going to go cut taxes for the tune of three percent of GDP. That is so un-European. I know like, it why is. <laughs> I I completely understand it. I get it. But I'm telling you that they're they, they've reached the end of monetarism. And for for you to continue betting that they're going to keep slamming their head against the wall, you might be right, but it doesn't make logical sense. That's all I can okay. say. Anyways, let's all go right. to number one. What do we got? Number one. Well, number one was uh, that huge momentum value shift, right, Kev? Yeah, now, I know. It was I know. actually large, way larger than the the headlines, and everyone realizes. So that I know you have a, you have a metric for it. I want to show your slide in a moment. But what I did here was take the um, iShares mom uh, momentum factor versus the value factor. Um, and just divide the two so you, we can really see the magnitude of this drop. And while it's certainly not even back to its April um, uh, levels, what is amazing is that in, in literally a span of a week, we wipe 10% on the differential. For sure. And if you're um, like, you know, if you're a long only investor, you basically that just means that if you were in those momentum names, you underperformed. But if you're a hedge fund and you're like a market neutral fund, you gotten just like a quant fund. You probably gotten hammered, hammered this because first they leverage week. up on their long shorts. Yeah. Right? Oh, so now, granted, so like it, it had pushed to new highs in 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 August, but um, it sure looked ugly in uh, in the September. Right. And, so Go like ahead, just Patrick. going back to this chart, just going back to this chart. So while the market seemed to be doing nothing during the summer from May to August, uh, anyone who was long momentum against short value was doing extraordinary. Well, yeah. And so I contend that this summer was actually much more violent than the market averages in, uh, kind of indicate. And I think the fact that we had that move in the government bond, uh, uh, government bonds, like the, you know, if we go to the government bond index, it was the greatest increase we've had in since the great financial crisis. Like, let's step back and remember, you know, I've said this before, but the, the great financial crisis, we had unemployment, you know, with double digits. We had banks not trusting each other, going out of business. We people foreclosing on houses. We're sitting here with absolutely, you know the economy not really showing that much signs of, of rolling over. Like, yes, it's weaker, but it's nowhere near the, the depths of despair that we had in 2007. And yet we just had the bond market, you know, you know, put in a, in a, in a price performance that was equal to that level. And I contend that there was actually a lot of pain that was occurring and there's a lot of crazy shit that was happening. And the fact that this is now unwinding is not surprising to me. And the real question is, does this get worse from here, Patrick? 
do yeah. we see the value kind of really get a bid and the momentum stocks continue to get hammered? And even so, like, do we see the, the, those high tech flyers really get crunched? And, you know, and, and, they, and that reminds me of the fangs getting killed. Was it 2016, 17? When, when, was, the, when was the big fang route? That basically uh, the market was fine, but the fangs were being murdered. Right. Uh, and, 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 and there's been other times as well that there's been huge moves within the market where there's quant crashes, where different factors go and they, they get, you know, crushed one versus the other. And if you're like sitting there as a regular investor, you think, oh, what's the big deal? Nothing's happening. Well, the reality is that the, 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 the renaissances or whoever has these trades on big, it's probably not a renaissance because they're way smarter than that, but all the kind of the, the, ETF uh, kind of smart beta guys that are getting just crushed and I still think that there is a chance that this was um, or at least I hope and I'm not you know maybe I'm just talking my book a, a switch into value a switch out of these names out of the kind of low volatility names out of these factors into real names and maybe that coincided with this end of this huge rally and chase into equities I mean sorry into into bonds and yeah. maybe that was really a blow off top in safety and i think that's something you should think about was this was august the end of august a blow off top in safety and then if you believe it was what does that mean going forward it's not an easy but so answers. when you when you like say not, blow off of safety are you also lumping in therefore the staples and utilities and all of ex this stuff exactly i didn't want to go too much down that road when we were talking about the 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 staples but to me, it's not surprising those things are rolling over with, uh, you know, with they've been a beneficiary of all this kind of rush into safety. And right. it's kind of been ironic because it's it's both safety and extreme growth that the investors have chased. It's like right. the, the, the safety the, and growth as in that you'll grow your way into the value. No, no, safety, the sa the and then safety, safety stocks and then, safety and then also growth stocks. Yeah. So it's been kind of like a barbell approach that many investors yeah. have taken. And so they'll be bidding up like low volatility, you know, staples and, and, and then also at the same time bidding for the, oh, yeah. you know, so the, the, the growth stocks. Yeah, like and Visa getting hammered, PayPal, uh, MasterCard, <laughs> you name it. Those growth names were just, yeah, it's just been getting killed. So I think that there's, there could be a, a, the start of, of a much bigger you, kind of uh, what what do you on. have do you have a little bit uh, what what's your bias from a sector perspective where you think there's value like are, are you in the uh, in the fine uh, value from financials or are you more value in so in I think energy, I think financials value? I think finance I think financials are cheap I think energy is dirt cheap whether it's uh, I, I'm worried that I'm I'm buying the whale oil, but the fact that I'm worried about that means you should probably buy it. Um, and, and I'm not worried that, that I actually believe it is whale oil, but I'm just worried that nobody else is going to, everyone else. I nearly choked on my beer when you said that, right? Like yeah, yeah, oil. Uh, but, but, um, and obviously home builders, you're going to have to throw it in there. Yeah, right? That was going to be my number one pick. I think that home builders are just uh, a screaming by and as American home builders. I think I continue. I said it a year ago. I continue oh, you did. to, I continue to you say did. it is going to be the best performing sector. I think it's going to lead the way out of the next kind of you this know, slowdown. And the real, question is whether this dip that we're seeing in the economy whether that was enough to reset and actually be kind of uh, a pause that refreshes and now we kind of go on a new economic cycle upturn cyclical upturn i don't know i'm i'm not calling it saying it's for sure going to happen because to me it's going to depend on the uh kind of the what the politicians do from the fiscal side but if they if they continue if they pull out their wallet and start spending then i'm going to be bullish as all hell and uh, i'm going to say the, this the one thing listen i i remain of the opinion that we're about to see some sort of an economic downturn i know it's so consensus at this moment but the one thing i will say is that the way that the slowdown actually plays out and what works and doesn't work will be i think far different than any of the past bear market cycles we had and things and i think if you're using 2008 as a template uh it's just not going to play out anything like that 
Uh, it's, it's, uh, and so there'll be things that will work, things that different things that will break. It's, it's, and, and it's, it's about intuitively trying to see, uh, how, how the unfolding reality is playing out for us. Right. Because I just don't think you can go to a playbook from the last bear market and well, you should never work. do that to be truthful because I can, I contend that that's the problem. Everyone does. Everyone takes the playbook from the last bear market and, and basically assumes it's going to look exactly like that one. And it never does. You know, yeah. the 2000, the dot com crash didn't look anything like the 1987 crash or the 1994 slowdown. Then the 2007 didn't look anything like the, t the dot com crash. Everyone was, I, you know, people forget, but everyone was super bearish technology in 2007. Yeah. Everyone thought that was going to be what crushes us. And there's all sorts of worries about that. And I contend it's going to be the same. You're going to see that everyone's sitting around worried about um, whatever it is uh, that, that hurt us last time. And, and it's not going to be the same. And I, I, I still contend that it's not going to come from the equity market and it's not going to, that it'll be something different and it won't be, you know, maybe it's corporate bonds, but I, I, I just don't see it because in essence, credit was what caused it last time. I'd still be more worried over the long run about inflation being the, the thing that ultimately causes the next crash. And I think it could be a while away because so far it looks like I'm really wrong on my inflation call, Patrick. <laughs> you are. But anyway, I'm not, let's not, let's leave it at that. Okay. So listen, one last thing uh, we're talking about this. We never talked about this slide that I brought up, put it back there, Patrick, cause this is from oh Bloomberg yeah. and I just for people that want to get a side, uh, you know, an idea, Bloomberg has this great function, uh, FTW, and it's basically factor investing of some sort. I don't know what that stands for, but you can see that the, the kind of performance of the different types of strategies and you see that us, this is year to date or the, or sorry, this is a rolling, um, week. This is the past week. It's, I was completely wrong. This is the past week, but the U S momentum was down almost 10% while, whereas portfolio U S value was up almost 5%. And that just yeah. sums up the factors that were working over the past week. And it was a huge, huge move from momentum into value. You and uh, you kind of had a great chart yeah. there of the two indices. I think it's something you continue to watch for, uh, for people that are interested in investing in value stocks, have a look at IWM which is the Russell 3000 value name 2000 um, isn't it? yeah the 3000, 3000 isn't it is it 2000 or th oh no it's the 2000 you're absolutely right Patrick you're better at these things than me uh, oh, it clearly. had a great it had a great week I contend it's down and out I've, I've long held the view that value is is one of the last remaining cheap assets and I still contend that and uh, and hopefully this is the start so of let's a say longer let's just term. have it quick you know because okay. our listeners may enjoy this but let, this is a weekly chart and you're absolutely right that that the uh, Russell 2000 value is just after spending pretty much two years in the gutter. I mean, it made its peak just after the vol of all and yeah. uh, and it's been a down and out. Uh, and it's and, greatly underperformed the growth one, which is IWO. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And and then there's the uh, iShares value. Uh, this is the value factor. MSCI what's the end, what's the symbol there? Give, v, uh, give her V L U E. Okay, that this actually is value it. without the A. Right, and it actually went and uh, it broke to new highs there. So it's no, actually, not new highs. Just uh, no, well, but new highs for this movie. Yeah. For for yeah, for 2019, it's at a higher high, but it hasn't beat its 2018 highs. But that's right. that's a, a pure value factor play, and so it, it, the question is: our va is value coming back? It's going to be one of the more interesting things for us to watch. We should definitely circle back a couple times uh, to this just to see whether or not there's something here, or whether this is just a one one week wonder.